Hello! Welcome to Barely's Basics. Now, this is a tutorial series initially focusing on Crusader Kings 3 with the possibility of branching out into other games like Stellaris or Total War Warhammer 3, you know, or whatever else happens to be of my interest at that point in time. This isn't a golden set of rules to follow, this is literally something that I found was an easy way of getting into the game. It helped me get my head around the mechanics and how, you know, Paradox likes to tease you with RNG. There are a ton of other ways to look into the game and to get into it. So if you do have any suggestions, please feel free to let me know below. I'll happily look into them and give my thoughts on them and maybe try and even incorporate them into future videos. You know, that kind of thing. With that being said, let's move on to our very first topic. So you've loaded up the game, and you're about to pick who you're going to play as, your first choice. Now, logically speaking, you're probably going to be drawn to playing as whatever nation that you have an interest in, which is really, really good for later on down the line. Maybe not so good for starting the game and learning it and getting your head around how the game behaves, because it's a paradox game. It does behave in a very funny way and will kick you while you're down repeatedly laughing and then taking your lunch money now personally something i think which is a really important choice and that a lot of people overlook with the beginning of the game is if you want to play as tribal or if you want to play as feudal now what are tribal and feudal tribal and feudal are the two well two of the three forms of government that are in this game the third form of government is clan, which is kind of a middle ground, uh, but it is restricted to Muslim regions, which I think that's right. I could be wrong. I apologize if I am. And whilst that's a very interesting type of government, and I will cover it in a separate video, it only makes up a small amount of actually what's in the game compared to tribal and feudal. So I kind of figured we'd lump these two together and just roll with that to begin with, and I'll make a more specialized Muslim-run video further on down the line. Okay, so the first form of government we're going to look at is feudal. Now, feudal is the more advanced government type and probably the stronger of the two. However, it's not the most beginner-friendly in my opinion. Everything is centered around gold. They are literally the Mr. Krabs of the Crusader Kingdom. Hello, now, I like money. the way I mean this is literally everything is going to be dependent on keeping the development of your countries tip top. And by development, I literally mean when I can click on the damn place. There we go. Down here, you'll see it says development. Now, this has an effect on your tax, which of course then puts money in your pocket. You'll need this money to declare wars. You'll need the money to pay court members to increase your royal court, which we will cover in a separate thing because I don't want to mention DLCs too much. This is literally going to be a base game kind of thing. I don't know, maybe. But literally everything with feudal revolves around gold, which is kind of frustrating because as feudal, you lose a very valuable way of making gold, which is quite irritating something that does play in the advantage of feudal though is cultural innovations now this is your tech tree as feudal you have three trees i think some even actually have an extra tree i could be wrong i think i'm wrong i might be imagining it on due to lack of coffee but this means you will be able to progress through the ages basically bettering yourself as you go along improving troops improving buildings improving tax improving order you know gaining different forms of succession gaining different ways of controlling your vassals you name it it's in here and it's pretty damn nice which is really really one of the biggest strong points of feudal because you kind of just keep progressing and keep getting better as time goes on now something i will mention I'll probably do a separate culture video really deep diving into all of it, so I won't go too much into this. But in order for you to really benefit from the cultural stuff, you kind of want to be the culture head. 
This means you get to choose what your entire culture learns. So we're the Danish. If anyone else happens to be Danish, we would be in control of their technologies. Now, if you're not, it can kind of be annoying because sometimes the AI will pick the most random thing and you're sitting there smacking your head against the keyboard saying, why aren't you giving me trebuchets? Because everyone should have trebuchets. Yeah, that's my rant over. Something that can be a little bit tricky with Feudal is your crown authority. Now, this is literally your authority over your vassals and subjects. You know, being able to revoke titles, being able to demand more levies and demand more tax from them, being able to throw people in prison easier. Problem is, the higher you go, the more they don't like you, but that's not the real issue here. The real issue is the fact that actually, in order to enact these laws, I will speak properly one day, I swear it, you have to have researched the appropriate technology in your cultural innovations, so this is a very slow process. You can't literally go 10 years and slap a new law down and make everyone unhappy but yourself incredibly rich. That sounds bloody familiar, doesn't it? So to sum up feudal, it's a very, very strong type of government, but I don't think it's very beginner-friendly. You'll find a lot of your hard work becoming undone if you haven't managed children and grandchildren in a lot of cases, which you're not really going to be doing that if you're starting out your first few campaigns. You're kind of still going to be feeling your way around everything. And so feudal is powerful, but is damn difficult to manage later on. So, well... Yeah, I don't think this is really the good option. So, tribal. The next form of government. Now, this is, as I said earlier, a lot more prominent in 867 rather than 1066. And has some very interesting things to do, which will help you as a beginner. The first big thing is not everything revolves around gold. In fact, you're actually going to need to balance it between gold and prestige, with gold actually not being as important. Now, what I mean by this is your troops will actually cost prestige to raise up. So, as you can see here, we already start with a couple of guys, but to get more troops, it costs us prestige, whereas in feudal, it would cost us gold. Now... This is useful because I can literally go ahead if I wasn't at war and raise raiders, which is a really nice way of boosting your economy. You'll get your raiders, send them off over into neighboring lands, take everything including their underpants, run back to your own lands, sell them all off and hey, presto, you're out of debt and you got some nice prestige, as long as you didn't get battered by the enemy before you got home. Now this becomes really useful because as I mentioned with feudal, increasing development in your counties is really important. You still don't want to ignore it as tribal because, hey, it gives you more gold, it increases your troop strength, increases the defense of your lands. There's a lot of benefits to just looking after your land. So being able to top up your resources relatively quick and relatively easy as long as you judge your targets. Now, this is something I will cover very quickly. Judging your targets is quite simple literally just click on the land and you'll be able to see how many troops they've got if they've got less than you you know for a fact you can generally go and raid their lands and they're not going to be able to stop you if you pick on the targets let's say west francia for example you're obviously going to have a bit more of a harder time because they have a ton of troops and could easily send an army to put you down now something i will say is the fact that i'm playing as sweden which I personally believe this is the best start for a beginner. And this will be who I will be playing as throughout the entire tutorial series. So you can kind of understand where I'm coming from. Now, something that is a drawback to tribal is the cultural innovations. As tribal, you are locked to one tree. So all of the nice texts like trebuchets and that, you've got no chance of getting them unless you reform yourself into feudal further on down the line this isn't too terrible because let's be honest if it's your first few games 
you'll probably fill out this tree and then everything will go terribly, terribly wrong because that's Crusader Kings. But it does mean that once you've got your head around things, you're going to want to be making sure you aim to be going tribal, feudal, not tribal. You are tribal. I swear, I need to sleep more or something. Something that is really, really good as tribal is war. Now, the reason for this, you can literally just go ahead and declare war. As you saw earlier on with feudal, I had to raise a Cassus Belai, and then I'd have to make sure I had enough gold. Whereas tribal, I can literally go, hmm, I like your land. I think I'll take that, thanks. It'll cost me piety, or in some cases, it'll cost me prestige. So, you know... I'm going to have a lot of those pretty pretty, you know, pretty easily because of the raiding mechanic and various other little bits. So conquering and grabbing land is so much easier as tribal than it is feudal. Feudal, you have an awful lot of red tape. Tribal, the only red thing you're going to be encountering is your enemy's neck when it's met your axe. So my broad overview of tribal and why I think that this is the way to start the game off is you're gonna get your head around an awful lot of the mechanics a lot faster the fact that you can declare war so much easier means that you can mess around with different compositions of troops you'll have to encounter the different various terrains you know the embarking penalties and things like that the fact that you aren't so focused on gold means you can kind of work out what is going to make a character strong, what will make them weak in a certain area, it's just going to give you a lot more freedom to experience the beginning of the game, rather than having to hyper-focus on your economy and kind of become tunnel-visioned, which I feel is really, really difficult with Feudal. So, thank you for hanging out with me for this video. I hope this has helped, and I hope to go on making lots more. And I hope they will all help. The next video I will make will be my initial do's and don'ts before you even unpause the campaign. So I will catch you gits next time. If you would like to sponsor, no, support the channel, that's the word. Please feel free to comment, like, subscribe. I'll leave the link for the Discord and my Twitter and my Twitch and Patreon and all the bloody stuff below. Goodbye my glorious kids.